Uh, my name is Frank Beard. I'm with Gas Buddy. I'm a uh, speaker, writer uh, within the fuel and convenience retailing space, kind of a uh, uh, advocate for the industry, you might say. And I'm Gas Buddy's analyst and evangelist for convenience store trends. We are sort of the dominant mobile app within the space. About 12 million people every month rely on our platform to find their perfect pit stop, rate stores, get real time gas prices. So that's kind of where we come in. And, you know, I imagine when you hear the word gas station, the phrase gas station, an image like this probably comes to mind. Um, and you know, five or 10 years ago, that wouldn't be entirely wrong, but probably a store that's a little small, uh, maybe a little dirty, maybe a scary restroom. Uh, <laughs> those roller dogs that you showed, you probably would have found those in this store and maybe just some interchangeable uh, CPG products, nothing too crazy. Uh, that's not really where the industry is today, however. The industry today is building bigger stores, cleaner stores. It's becoming a real destination for high quality products. Um, your eyes are actually not playing tricks on you with that picture in the middle of the bottom. That station in Texas, there's actually two fuel canopies there, over 100 fueling locations, and that's a company called Bucky's with 35 stores. You see, you see retailers like this in the industry today, and it's moving ra very rapidly in a more specialty direction, and that's kind of what I want to give an overview of here real quick. So, couple things to consider though, a lot of retailers are moving really food forward as a way to differentiate themselves. Wawa right now, I'm sure most folks in this room hopefully have been to a Wawa, but they sell 80 million hoagies a year and 200 million cups of coffee. That's something like 27, I think it's around 27 Olympic swimming pools. It's pretty staggering. Um, Cumberland Farms, actually when uh, there was a study done on consumer perceptions of coffee quality from a, a, a Technomic, and they found that Cumberland Farms came in at number four right ahead of Duncan in terms of consumer perceptions of coffee quality. In fact, out of the top 20, 12 of those were convenience store brands. Um, Casey's General Store, I'm from Des Moines, Iowa. I live five minutes from their headquarters, two blocks from one of their stores. They're the fifth largest pizza chain in the United States. Um, if you haven't had their breakfast pizza, it's kind of the eighth wonder of the world. I highly suggest you get one. And we also see that this is playing out really successfully. W using data at Gas Buddy, we analyzed foot traffic during you know, the recent uh, uh, weekend of uh, Memorial Day and found that convenience stores drove a higher visit uplift during that weekend than QSRs and coffee shops. We're talking 69% visit uplift compared to 27% at QSRs and 20% at coffee shops. So they seem to be doing fairly well. So the question a lot of folks have at this point is, well, what's happening? Like, why do the convenience stores look like this today? The industry unofficially was kind of operating on a model of gas, cokes, and smokes for decades. Um, how can we get them in and out in four minutes? Uh, it's kind of undifferentiated products, basic snack selection, one size fits all promotions. Really no reason to visit other than perhaps impulse or necessity. But what it's really turning into now is becoming a one-stop destination that you would actually drive out of the way to visit. Um, Convenience stores already really have kind of staked their, you know, staked their reputation on having the best beverages, the, I mean, the best selection of beverages, the best selection of snacks. So they're winning in that area, but now they're also getting into specialty snacks, specialty beverages, moving forward with food service. Um, we actually ran a survey at Gas Buddy recently and found that consumers actually prefer convenience stores over drugstores and warehouse stores for packaged goods. Um, Fresh and healthy is actually a big part of this. I actually, <laughs> I spent an entire month a couple years back eating only in convenience stores, tracked every calorie for an entire month, very transparent, to show that you can actually make healthy choices on the go. I even lost an additional six pounds doing it um, because there are good choices at convenience stores today. The industry itself partnered with the Partnership for Healthier America, which was started by our former first lady to really just help make the country healthier. And the National Association of Convenience Stores was actually their first retail trade association partner. Um, quick trip with a K or K T, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and about half of Iowa. Uh, they have a little more than 650 stores. They're selling 400 pounds of bananas per store per day on average. Seriously, I was in a store and counted, I think almost 25 whole fruit and vegetables for sale, and they're cheaper than the grocery store. They were actually the first convenience store to partner with Partnership for Healthier America. Um, but retailers are in a good position to win here. One thing that really stands out to me, uh, Technomic did a study last year, and they found that 78% of baby boomers go to a convenience store once a month, which is still pretty, pretty big. But what it interested me is that exact same percentage of millennials and Gen Z visit once a week. 
almost a full 100% of Gen Z, 97% visit once a month. But see stores, they win, this, they win in snack and, snacking and beverages. The store footprints are getting larger. 93% of Americans live within 10 minutes of a fuel or convenience store. So they have an insane level of proximity with more than 154,000 locations across, across the United States. Um, and consumers say it's getting better. We did a Gas Buddy survey recently. 75% of respondents said that the quality of convenience store food service has actually improved over the past five years. So then you see concepts like this. If you're in Nashville, check out twice daily sometime. Now, they built a really great coffee concept, and instead of calling it twice daily coffee, they called it white bison coffee. It sounds nicer, it looks just as good as any of the coffee shops in town, and they're running a legitimate third wave coffee program in there. I went in and had single origin pour over coffee while staring at a shell fuel canopy out of the window. Their Wi-Fi was downloading 75 megabytes a second. It's about five times faster than the major coffee chain across the street. It's a really cool place and it's worth visiting. Um, and again, I'll share a lot of our data probably as we go through the conversation here today. Um, is again, like we, this is a really fragmented industry, and so our perspective is we kind of tie it together through a large mobile app. Um, but we do a lot of surveys, use a lot of location data, so hopefully I'll be able to share some good insights today and help explain this trend.